uh, a clinical psychologist and author, as you all can see there on the program, as well as teaching here at East Los Angeles College. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce to you all, if we're ready for it, then we're ready. Wow, that's, not, that's like saying good morning to my class at 9 a.m. One more time. Is everyone ready? Yes, all right, all right. So let's keep it going. We're about to hear from Dr. Jody Adewale. Thank you. Thank you all for having me. Much appreciated. Nice shoes. First of all, I just want to say thank you all for having me. And I'd like you guys to give yourselves a round of applause for being here. On a very nice lots of other things you could be doing. I myself was watching the fight, and I was a little late because I was watching the fight, and Trump was a little bit ahead, and Cruz was on his way down, and went, but, but uh, I, I said, let me come to, to the dinner instead. <laughs> there, uh, the, <laughs> the man I'm introducing today, the man is a man I have admired, and I have followed in footsteps, I have looked up to since I, started, since I first heard the word football. I, myself, born in East Los Angeles, went to Roosevelt High School. <laughs> From Roosevelt, where I played football, this, the man who I'm going to introduce offered me a football scholarship to come play at USC, continuing to follow in his footsteps. He is a man who, I, I, like I said, I admired. I tried to emulate the things that he did and the actions that he made. He, got his JV, an, an, an athlete, an NFL athlete, getting his JV. Just that deserves a round of applause. <laughs> Trying to be like Mr. Garrett, I got my PhD. <laughs> Mr. Garrett also won the Heisman Trophy. I borrowed Reggie Bush's Heisman Trophy for, <laughs> for a night. <laughs> he let me borrow So that's a little, a little more similarities. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Garrett has won two Super Bowls. He has been the athletic director at USC. He has been a source of inspiration for myself, for many of you in this room. He has shown people how to treat family, treat friends, treat people who may not necessarily not deserve your respect, but you're just going to give it to them anyway. I can I can tell you. There were many times at USC you would see high class, very high, important people, the mayors, uh, politicians, coming in and watching practice and talking to Mr. Garrett. And he would treat them the exact same way he would treat the janitor or the person cleaning up the field after or the, the individual who fed us water, who gave us water. So his, his, his demeanor, his respect, it's not, it's not, it's not a phony it's it's thing. It's a real character that this man has. And, and this is one fact this man has taught me. He has taught me character. Mr. Mike Garrett has taught me character. A story that, oh thank you, a story that uh, resonates real well with me is a athlete named Chauncey Washington. I don't know if you remember him, but he was a running back at USC. And he, he, we, were, we were all hanging out in, in our dorm room, myself, Rich Bush, a couple of quarterbacks, and he came in with his eyes like, just shot, like bloodshot. He sat down on the couch, and I'm like, Chauncey, what's wrong? Are you okay? I just got out of Mike Garrett's office. I'm like, what happened? He just ripped my ass up. <laughs> I was like, what? why? What happened? He, I, my grades have been struggling, and he just tore me a new one. And I've never seen a guy like Chauncey scared. He, this is a big, big running back. He could take on anybody. He, he NFL athlete, played for the Jets. But Chauncey's grades were struggling so bad that Mr. Garrett didn't care about his performance on the field. He gave it to him because he knew he could be a better student and a better individual in life. Not just on the field, but off the field. We, um, we focus a little bit on SC, all the success they had, and everyone gives it to Coach Carroll. Everyone shoots it that way. But in my opinion, it, the success is due from the top. And Mr. Garrett, he is, he was, is, and still is at the top. And in my opinion, the success that school has had came from this man. The, the idea that East Los Angeles carries, the, 
the philosophy we carry. It's not a place. It's a lifestyle. It's a way you live. It's a way you breathe. It's a way you walk. It's a way you talk. It's a way you respect your your friends. It's a way you take care of your parents when they're in their elderly age. It's 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 an embodiment of what a man and a woman should be. And in my opinion, Mr. Mike Garrett embodies every single one of those facts. So with all due respect and with great honor, I'd like you guys to stand up and give a round of applause to Mr. Mike Garrett. Think about uh, East LA. It's the reason I'm back here at Cal State LA. I can tell you, I lived I lived 536 North North Merida in in Montevideo Projects. Parents came out here to in the early 40s um, to get a job in the aerospace industry, and I remember the. Uh, that we lived in, we could look out, look east, and saw nothing but alfalfa fields and cattle. I remember the times of looking out the kitchen and the bathroom window or the bedroom window and, and see cattle grazing in our backyard. And many years, a few years later, they built East LA College. Monterey Park was nothing but hillside or cattle graze and horses would roam. And uh, the city of East LA to me was Belvedere Park before they had a new gym, which is an old gym now. Yeah. <laughs> it was Brigham Avenue and there was a gully between Belvedere Park and, and Brigham Avenue. It's called, uh, it's called uh, Hamasaki Elementary now. It was Reagan Avenue, and then there was Kern, just Griffith Town, and then it was Roosevelt. I mean, it was Garfield. And being a family of six kids, my mom, we always said my, 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 my family, we had two litters. We had uh, kids. We had two older sisters and a brother, and then my mom waited six years and had me and two younger sisters. So the first three kids went to Garfield. And, uh, and I always thought I was going to be a, a, a bulldog because it was red and blue, some white on the uniforms, but I used to go, my brother played uh, football there at, at Garfield, and I would go watch him play. And I never thought I would be a rough rider because I was going to be a bulldog. And then uh, some 15 years later, we moved to the city, lived at First in Evergreen, and um, guess what? I went to Stevenson Junior High School, and I went to Roosevelt. And so, <laughs> so the first time that, uh, as a tenth grader, we had to play against Garfield, I had mixed emotions, and the families were 
pretty excited about it. And uh, I, I went on the field early as a high school player to see Garfield. Because I always thought I was going to be a bulldog. Of course, in a few years, I learned to hate Garfield hate Gar <laughs> <laughs> quite easily. But East LA is probably, it's in my heart. And, uh, it's all, it will always be in my heart. I, I remember when they built East LA College, and I do remember the uh, buildings, the war building, I can't think of the uh, bungalows, yes. And I remember when they built the stadium there. And I remember watching the, 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 the Huskies practice in the green open space at the football team in their white uniforms and white helmet. And uh, those are great times for me. Because one of the things that I, I, I remember most was all I knew was East LA. And I was thinking back to Belvedere uh, Park. And there was a man named Oscar Gallegos, who was the uh, park director. Great man. Great looking man, too. My, my mother always had a crush on him. <laughs> and I remember at, at, uh, at Reagan Avenue on the Saki Elementary now, there was a big track meet. And we would, we would run the, against all the elementary schools or grammar schools, we called them then, in the area. And I had to look it up because I couldn't remember all the elementary schools. But if I mention them, I think it will come bring something to your mind. It was, let me look here now. Okay, there was Brooklyn Avenue, which we know is still there. Then it was Mariana. And then was Ford Boulevard. And then there was City Terrace. And then there was Eastman. And then it was Belvedere. We just hated Belvedere. <laughs> and, then, and then there was a Rowan Avenue. And then to close it out, was, it was Reagan Avenue. But we had this track. And I remember the uh, teachers were, had us out there at Belvedere Park running up and down the field. And I can still look at the layout of um, Belvedere Park because on one end, there was, there, was, there was a pool here, and next to the pool there were, there were basketball courts, and then next to the basketball courts there was a softball field, and then perpendicular there was another softball field. Well, that day in the track meet, we used the outfields of both soft, uh, of softball fields to run track. track against all these 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 um, elementary schools and um, they ran the 50 and they ran the 30 so the little kids they don't they didn't make you run the 100. Oscar the guy was I'm standing there trembling and, and he looks at me and he says you're okay Ronnie and I said I'm so nervous I can just die and he says fake it Fake it. Get up there. Look like you know what you're doing. And fake it. Well, I failed. And I won the, won the race. But I remember. I remember later. And may it be at Roosevelt. May it be at USC. Get the Kansas City Chiefs of Senate and the Chargers are playing the Super Bowl game. I was always terribly nervous. In the back of my mind, all the time, was Oscar Miguel saying, fake it. <laughs> and that's kind of my model of my whole life. You get nervous, you're dealing with challenges, and not sure of yourself. And all I can think about was fake it. 
So I've been faking it for a long time. <laughs> It's very important that uh, it was been going on for approximately a year when Dr. Covino and Jose Gomez came to me and said, we would like you very much to come back to um, Cal State LA or come back to East LA. And then I have some high school friends, Ed Herbert Seal and so many others. I said, Mike, we need you back in East LA. Well, I'm back in East LA. <laughs> and the mission is very simple. We're going to win here at Cal State LA. And the goal is in two years to go Division One. We have tested the, the surroundings and we can join the WAC conference in two or three years at the most. We will become a major basketball school. You've heard of Providence, Connecticut, Connecticut, most schools like that. Well, we're going to become that. And uh, we'll need your help. And I always think if you do nothing else, just spread the news that Cal State LA is not going to be one where we're going to stay rock steady. It's going to be one where Cal State LA and East LA College will become the anchor of this community. There we go. I'm counting on East LA to give us recruits every year in all our sports from cross country to track and field to soccer to uh, uh, we're really important that, that we do well in uh, volleyball and and I, I think that uh, as we're recruiting now, we're going to get some Olympians in our track team. But more importantly, the thing that turns us around is to be good at something that goes to the NCAAs and basketball, men's and women's. I hate to lose. And I'm going to be telling my staff when I took over, I said the same thing. If you get nervous and not sure of yourself, or think you can't win, fake <coughs> it. <laughs> and uh, there's only one thing to do, and, I, and it's no different than when I was at USC. The, the phrase always, that, you know, <coughs> we're going to win. You have to fake it, you fake it. But I'd rather just dominate everybody I can touch. <laughs> so, what you're going to find with the Golden Eagles, you, you might as well call us. I mean, you might as well call us the, uh, it doesn't matter. You can call us the Golden Eagles or you can call us the Tarantulas or anything, but we are going to become a dominant basketball school and we have to do it yesterday because I don't want to stay around that long. <laughs> died two years ago. She was a month from being 60 at 96. But the one thing we we lived in Alpharetta for 30, 35 years, and we never forgot how to lose. Never so often we'd just get in the car. We would drive from first and boil to, to uh, Atlantic Boulevard and I don't know if you, many of you remember this. Do you remember the Golden Gate Theater? We would walk from the projects to the Golden Gate and watch movies. And uh, yeah, they had cereals on where these the cowboys, I can't remember, I think it was Hopalong Cassidy or Roy Rogers or something like that. But those are great times in my life. And uh, I, I think about when I went to going to New York for the first time and, and you know, where I go to Tokyo, London, doesn't matter. My heart is always in East LA. And if I tell you, if I can tell young people now what we're gonna do here is, hey guys, we have to win. 
and we take no prisoners. No prisoners. It's great to be a Golden Eagle. Thank you very much. appreciation we thank you for your for your time and your words and inspiration and the impact that you're saying there's a couple of notes um, I teach communication studies here on campus at East Los Angeles College a lot of people just think about that and their their trauma of public speaking which by the way the advice of faking it is great you know a lot of people get nervous it's like oh, just, I guess you can fake it for what happened that also works there but on a more serious note Thinking about the architecture of the city and the way in which the architecture changes over time and the way in which you can decode that, break that down into different meanings and the way you're able to compare those, uh, even the images and understandings and being able to still see a different structure when you look at the hills of, let's say, Monterey Park, Montebello, or East Los Angeles. That um, is not only a clue to a certain history, but it's, it's crucial to not just see these things as big old buildings that are going up, but they're, they're signs of a particular time, and they're also things that are communicative in, in some way, and where, where you see yourself in the larger landscape. So we appreciate you for that. Um, and we're gonna keep it um, going, of course, and uh, lots of different things, um, lots of great ideas from the words of, of uh, Mike Garrett. We appreciate you, and um, hopefully we'll send some fathers your way. I know I got a lot of basketball players in my classes, so yeah, yeah definitely. They're, when I ask them to bring in objects to introduce themselves, it's like they don't coordinate though, because all six of them will bring in basketballs in the same thing. Y'all gonna take your thunder here. That's all right. At any rate, we have some, some more folks to, uh, to recognize, but we hope you all are um, not only having a good time, but I want to remind you all of, of these things. We got a signed helmet from Mike Garrett. So if you're interested in that, that was one of the things that are be there in the raffle as well as a photograph. And if you win it, I think he'll agree that you can take a photograph with Mike Garrett, with your photograph of Mike Garrett. And that's, that's gonna go viral, I think. 